Kaprizov watch continues. The Wild have a new uniform and the NHL is heading to Beijing for the 2022 Olympic Games. Let's go Team USA. Our final episode before we bring you season three presented by Soda Stick brought to you by Jim Beam, Better Edge and State Farm Insurance agent Tony Hoagland at champlininsurance.com. This is episode 89. New Bar Down Beauties hats plus all of your favorite Minnesota merch can be found at sodastick.com. Snake 15% off all purchases with code Bar Down Beauties at sodastick.com. Again, that's sodastick.com. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition, like chanting let's play hockey prior to the start of each game, or playing the state of hockey anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Remember, drink smart. Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume, copyright 2021, James B. Beam Distilling Company, Incorporate Claremont, Kentucky. What's going on, everybody? We're back. Episode 89, the final episode of season two. Thank you all for making the season three possible. At least we think. We're going to still forge ahead with season three, (laughs) whether whether you like it or not. (laughs) Yeah, but uh, that's pretty exciting stuff, Alexis. How was Labor Day weekend? We're kicking this off. Final Mm -hmm. final uh, of season two. Did you go to the state fair? I did not. I am a, so listen, okay. I, this is a pre pandemic Alexis thing. This isn't like the pandemic made me this way. I do not like large crowds. Um, I do not like being in big crowds where people don't have their own space. So like if I'm in a big crowd, but I have my own area and nobody's touching me and in my space, I can handle it. I do not like rubbing shoulders, standing in big lines. That's not for me. In August when everyone's sweaty. (laughs) You're hot, you're sweaty, you're (laughs) drinking, you're hungry. Um, So the state fair is kind of one of my worst nightmares, but every every now and then I will power through because I love trying the food. I love trying the drinks um, and it is a good time. I've been to concerts at the state fair, which are fun. Um, But this year I did not make it. I'm pretty much on like an every other year basis. Um, obviously didn't, you know, no, nothing last year because of the pandemic. Um, but I did go, I think two years before that. So yeah, I, I really didn't have much time either. So even if I wanted to, I don't think I would have gone. I know you were there though, Jesse. I mean, it was a little bit of a force. Usually my husband and I do go like, <laughs> you, have, like you brought all the kids date. too. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. That was yeah. a treat. No, actually they were great. Um, we got to see the unveiling of the winter classic Jersey had a little write up for NHL.com. We'll talk more about the Minnesota wild winter classic Jersey, which I know every single one of you absolutely <laughs> loved. Um, that'll be up in segment two, as well as our cues with the buttes, which makes its return. Uh, check that out over on our YouTube. We'll answer a couple of questions, including our personal thoughts on the Jersey. Uh, let's dive into quite a bit of NHL talk. Actually yeah. start with the NHL protocols that now have come out. Uh, it looks like myself, and you uh, mm-hmm. vaccinated and masks, we are allowed to enter locker rooms again, which is so wonderful. As, as I've said before, that's yeah. where you get the really good stories. That's where you get those little tidbits. That's where you get to know the players. I mean, it's not that we want to just be in the locker room, hanging right. out, throwing <laughs> out. It's that's where you have those side conversations. You have those one-on-ones, you get the really good stories there. So it's super exciting to have that again. This is all as of right now with right. preseason starting up uh, here in, in training camp in just a couple of weeks. Um, but Alexis, the protocols seem to be a little bit harsher on the non-vaccinated players, which we're seeing yeah. in the NFL right now yep. too. I mean, I think that's probably the safest way to go. It is what it is, right? I mean, they're doing what they think is going to produce a safe season for people, produce a complete season um, for these teams, right? They don't want to have to be rescheduling games, canceling games. Um, That's a lot of work for a league to manage with as many teams and players as there are. So whatever you believe as far as what the regulations should be when it comes to sports, at the end of the day, they're doing what is going to make the safest and most complete season. And I'm on board with that. Some Mm -hmm. of the rules stink. I get it. Like whether you're media, athlete, fan, whatever, I get some of it is hard. Uh, it might create some hurdles for you to be able to go to games or be a part of, of, you know, your job, if you work for these teams. Um, and I'm sure some of the players, um, are frustrated with some of the rules, but at the end of the day, I applaud the league for putting together a safe plan and doing what they think is going to work best. And I hope we get through a season safely and completely, um, and don't have to miss out on so many things that we've been missing out on for the last two years. Um, so I I'm happy that they put something in place. And like you said, Jesse, you know, for media to be able to be back in the locker room. I know that was a big thing. A lot of media have been worried about across the board because 
people kept thinking, you know, is this something permanent? Are we never going to get back in the locker room? And I know it sounds like a silly thing to somebody who doesn't work in sports. Like, does it really matter? You can still do your job. You can still ask questions and get interviews. Um, But it truly is, in my opinion, and I know you agree as well, Jesse, one of the best parts about working in sports. Um, And it's not just like you said, oh, yeah, we get to hang out with the players. Like, that's not what it's about. Far from that. (laughs) No. Yeah, it's just there's something about that experience of, of, you know, making those relationships with them. And for those of of you who are writing stories and doing that kind of stuff, you get the best content that way. And you can Mm -hmm. truly build a relationship outside of like, oh, I'm a reporter and I'm asking you questions. You Mm -hmm. build friendships and um, it it truly is one of the best parts about working in sports. So kudos to the NHL for coming up with a plan. I I know that takes a lot of work and I'm sure stress to put one together. Um, And it'll probably change, right? Like it remains fluid, like everything. No, I mean, going back to the access to the locker room, it was funny. I ran into Zach Parisi this summer and, and Jared Spurgeon recently, and I had the baby and they were like, oh my gosh, congratulations. I'm like, yeah, I was pregnant the whole season. You didn't know that because I was <laughs> yeah. on Zoom. We didn't see each other, right. but uh, thank you. Saw you saw each other from the neck up and that was yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, it is, it's just kind of those little, again, you have to develop a sort of relationship yeah. with these players in order for them to trust you and, mm-hmm. and to put that good content out that we love. Um, there has been no official statement from the Minnesota wild, at least about yep. what the requirements will be for fans. Um, earlier this week, the Vegas golden Knights did say that no COVID negative tests and no vaccinations will be required, but Mm -hmm. fans will be required to mask up. We saw how many people were there in, uh, at (laughs) T-Mobile in Vegas. So we'll see what happens. I know, I believe the wild are hoping to open it up. Their plan was to open it up a little bit more, uh, had the playoffs continued a little bit longer, (laughs) Um, but stay tuned. Yeah. For what that attendance might look like, uh, some of the protocols in case you missed it for the NHL, um, unvaccinated players who end up sick will not be paid, which is, you know, it's a hit in them where it hurts in the wallet. I do believe the NHL right now has a 95% vaccination rate. So I'm sure you'll see that number get very, very close to hundred because these guys want to play. They want to be there for a team. I mean, such a team sport. You don't want to spoil it for the rest of your guys by knocking a whole group out. I mean, Marcus Foligno last year said he felt terrible when he was the one that ended up. (laughs) He took that one on the chin. (laughs) Yeah. Right. And that was again, before vaccinations and everything were kind of a requirement. I think the Minnesota wild, at least the former Minnesota wild are all vaccinated. They were as of April. Um, I'm sure their team's still looking like that. So kind of, uh, exciting news again, their hope is to Mm -hmm. get through a full season. I want to get through a full season. I'm crying out loud. I forget (laughs) what a full season is like, so let's just do it. Let's go. Um, again, more Minnesota wild talk coming up in segment two, another big announcement from the NHL. They reached an agreement with the IIHF and the NHL players are returning to the Olympics, Beijing games. Here you come February, 2022. Again, that's all assuming pandemic right. is clear. I mean, Pending. Again, there, there will probably be more hurdles, but yeah, Alexis, I'm here for it. You know, I'm a team USA girl yep. through and through. I love it. I love seeing the best of the best go up against each other. I mean, I, I think it's hard to find a person who doesn't enjoy watching the Olympics in some capacity, right? Everyone has their favorites, their favorite players to watch or favorite sports to watch. Um, there's some athletes who just somehow find a way to shine in every Olympics they participate in. And that's fun. To follow the, <laughs> yeah, that's fun <laughs> to follow those athletes as well. Um, so really exciting to give the players the opportunity to be able to do that. I know a lot of the players, you know, it, it's funny because you know, all the athletes that we've had on this podcast and asking them about their, you know, journey through their sport and and how they got to where they are and some of their best memories. I feel like any of the ones who've competed in some kind of international level, it always makes their, their favorites list as far as, uh, you know, best moments in their career. So I I love that these athletes have the opportunity to go do this representing your country, uh, whatever country it is, is a feeling unlike any other. Um, I can't relate. I'm not an athlete, but I'm sure it's a good feeling. (laughs) Um, so I know they love it. I'm excited. They get the opportunity for it. And yeah, Jesse, this is your bread and butter right here. Oh, baby. I mean, again, (laughs) if you go back a couple, quite a few episodes, I talked about waking my now husband, then boyfriend (laughs) up on Valentine's day to go watch the Olympics in, uh, in Sochi. It was a five o'clock game. We had, you know, bloody Marys and yogurts. And it was, I'm gung ho on the Olympic games. Um, more so when I know the players, I mean, unfortunately, when you do not allow the NHL guys. It's a little bit harder to get into it. I mean, world juniors are a totally different thing um, than the Olympics. You know, world juniors, you have still some big names, whereas Mm -hmm. when Canada and US and and Russia and everybody had to form a team of relative unknowns, um, it makes it a little different to watch. It's harder to get into, you know, it's Mm -hmm. harder to kind of 
look at the teams and say, how do they match up? Because you we really have no idea. Um, you know, uh, Bill Guerin is the assistant general manager to Stan Bowman for Team USA. So a little bit of wild flavor there. We'll get into that a little bit more again in segment two and in cues with the Buttes because somebody had yeah. asked uh, who, the, who we think the Wilds will have represented. I think there'll be quite a few. Um, I think it's going to be a tough go for Team USA. You have yeah. a lot of Americans continuing to be on the rise. But I think you look at Team Canada, like, my mm-hmm. God, that is stacked. You look at Russia stacked. You look at Finland even. Yeah. Um, I think Team USA, if they come out fourth, that's a victory. And I, I want them to come, you know, I want Canada, U.S. for the gold. But I yep. think that's going to be a, a hefty order. Yeah, I always root for Canada U.S. gold just because I love watching the Twitter world burn uh, when it happens <laughs> um, because there's so many, obviously, Canadian and American, um, you know, hockey people on Twitter and a lot of people mm-hmm. we interact with. I think about some of the people we interact with on Twitter on a daily basis. You almost forget sometimes that we're American <laughs> and they're Canadian and then the Olympics happen. Yeah. You're like, oh, yeah, that's right. I hate you this week. Um, Super so, divisive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. it just gets very spicy very quickly. Uh, people are angry. Their feelings are hurt. And it is a great time to, to watch all of that unfold on Twitter. So you got to love the Canada USA matchups. Those are fun. But like you said, a lot of teams um, with some really good talent on them who will make for some fun games, no matter who the USA uh, ends up matching up against. So I, I'm looking forward to it as well. It'll be here before we know it, honestly. Exactly. <laughs> Should that game Canada US come to fruition, I know I will head to betteredge.com. Make sure to place a bet on us. Obviously <laughs> uh, I'm sure we'll be chirping people on our bar down beauties page, which yeah. is now available. Be sure you follow that. We've got some cool competitions coming up once hockey season starts that are exclusive to bar down beauties. You can also listen to our podcast right in the app. They've made some really cool updates as well. College football mm-hmm. rocking and rolling at better edge. Again, that's better Uh, You can use code Buttes B E A U T S for a free $10 when you sign up. So be sure to go check that out. Those guys are awesome. I have a lot of fun. I sadly lost $50 on the Gopher Ohio state game. It was looking very promising and I lost. So we'll, I lost uh, a little bit of, of sanity. Learn. So I don't know what's worse. Losing yeah, some you were there, right? Losing some money. I was there. My first ever go for football game had a fantastic time. That's crazy. Um, but it, it that was a fun game. So yeah, it's happy, happy to have college football back and more things to bet on, on betteredge.com. Go cyclones game day, baby <laughs> against Iowa coming up. So, uh, we'll see how that goes, but yeah, back to NHL news <laughs> anyway. and, uh, teams that we may or may not cheer for. I did confirm with Zach Parisi that he has reached an agreement with the New York Islanders. I didn't tweet it out as my scoop because I'm an employee of the NHL (laughs) and they asked me not to, but I beat Russo. Let's make that clear. I beat Russo. I knew it. And I also didn't want to get Zach in trouble with Lou, Um, but it does sound like Parisi is heading to the Isles. I'm not sure what continues to be the holdup. I think they're probably uh, reworking some salary cap. And I think it's probably going to be a one-year deal for Zach. I don't know Mm -hmm. that it's much more, um, but I know he's super excited to go there. Uh, New York just re-signed a bunch of their key mm-hmm. players. They've, he's got a lot of players he's familiar with. He's obviously familiar with Lou Lamarillo. Uh, Alexis, do you, uh, you think that's a good fit for him? You know, the more I think about it, I was kind of on the fence. I believe I said this on the podcast a little while ago that I wasn't sure how good of a fit that was going to be for him. Um, I do think Zach Preezy is the kind of guy that can really blend in anywhere because his MO is hustle and hustle is something that every team will appreciate. Um, yes. And that's something Zach Preezy has always provided no matter his age or, or the point he's at in his career. Um, you can always count on him for that. And so the more that I've really thought about it, I do think that he will be a good fit with a team like the New York Islanders who are very, I mean, they put on a clinic, right? Like, like everything they do is so structured and so planned and so organized and they kind of get, you know, called out for being boring sometimes because they're so perfect in the way they do everything. Um, and so I think that for the point that Zach's at in his career, this is going to be a good fit. I know he's excited to, to play under Lou Lamarillo. Um, and like you said, New York obviously has a lot of great pieces. So this isn't a team that's rebuilding or necessarily super young with all, you know, these rookies. Um, and I think Zach will find a, a good spot there on that team and hopefully contribute to a successful season because I know Zach believes he's got some left in the tank still, and hopefully he can use that uh, with the Islanders. It did, you know, in chatting with him, you could just see the immense amount of excitement. I think he was unfortunately for, for wild fans or not fortunate, unfortunately, I guess, (laughs) um, he, he was just kind of done here. I think he was just kind of over it. He was, he had a little less, you know, energy. I don't think he, I mean, I think he would have obviously gone out there and given his all had he stuck with Minnesota, but he just seems very rejuvenated, which Mm -hmm. moving to a new team, a new change of scenery will do to a player. So, I mean, I think you're going to see a very successful Zach Parisi out there and he's, he's surrounding himself with a very promising thing team. I'm a huge Isles fan Mm -hmm. for all that beautiful Minnesota flavor. So that's (laughs) pretty cool. 
um, you know, and, and good for him. And I know his dad, JP had played out there once yeah. upon a time too. So I'm sure that means a little something to him. And so best of luck, Mr. Parisi, since I know you listen to this content all the time, um, hopefully not. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, uh, we'll be watching the aisle, see how he does yeah. their first game back here. I'm sure we'll be an interesting one to say the least. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We'll, uh, we'll see what happens. Get a good tribute video going and, uh, I'm sure it'll be a good time <laughs> again. I go back. Let's not boo. Let's not. You know, yeah. Come on. Don't be the Preds who booed Brian Preds. Suter for seven yeah. years or however long it was. Yeah. Way too long. <laughs> I know Exactly. Kind of final piece of non Minnesota content. The OHL has suspended Montreal's first round draft pick from this year. Uh, Logan Mayu because of, uh, indecent, I don't know what they, the violation of OHL standards. Yeah. Um, for those of you who forgot Montreal picked him with a 31st overall pick, which was a very questionable, very yep. kind of <laughs> ugly pick because Logan, um, had come out and admitted to sending, uh, pictures of him and a female in sexual activity, mm -hmm. uh, without her consent, which not okay. Um, Alexis, do you think this will force Montreal to, make a further announcement. I mean, they came out with a statement standing by their selection, which again, <laughs> the problem with that, for those don't of you say who don't anything at that point <laughs> is the fact that you feel like you have to defend that because yes. you're saying that ho his hockey skill is more important than anything else. Right. Yep. And it's yep. like more important than this girl, more important yep. than everything. And I know we've talked about that, but I think the OHL saying that he is yep. banned, he can apply for reinstatement January one. Uh, but as of now he is banned, I think Montreal has to come out and probably do what Arizona did with their questionable yep. pick last year and say, sorry, our bad, we're done. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, I, I want to start by saying I, I am a firm believer in second chances and, you know, you know, making up for your mistakes and doing right on what you did wrong. Right. So totally. if, if you have a way to, to fix what you did or compensate for it and apologize sincerely, there's a, a variety of things that you can do to fix a problem that you make. And I believe that people deserve chances to fix that and to get respect for fixing that problem. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do not like the way that all of this went down. I mean, basically the information was there. Montreal had the information, went against it. That was the first problem. Second problem was Logan said, I don't think I should be drafted. I yes. made a mistake and they did it anyway. So now, mm -hmm. now you got two problems. Three, like you said, if you think you have to make a statement, gee, you probably did something wrong. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the third problem. Um, it's just, there. it was issue after issue after issue. And it was almost laughable. Like the situation was so serious that it wasn't funny, but it's like, are you serious right now? Is this a joke? And, um, mm -hmm. so there was just so many problems that unfolded there. Um, and, and I don't like that the way, the way that they handled it. So I think that the right thing to do at this point is to say, sorry, we're, we're not going to do this. This is, that is the only way in my opinion that th that I mean, Montreal even then, can fix what they did. <laughs> even then like Arizona, it's too little too late. Like, right. I mean, at least it's come at a time where they're not being forced. Like every, the crowd and you know, the torches have died right, down from right. it. Right. Like Arizona, as soon as people came for them, we're like, okay, yep. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> our bad. Whereas Montreal is kind of like me something in French. Right. And right. like now it's, I mean, at least it doesn't seem like it's just total knee jerk reaction yeah. to that, but I do, I think they need to take a, a deep, hard look at it mm -hmm. and be like, what do we do? I mean, in like you, Alexis totally believe in second chances yep. and especially for young, young people, kids. right? Yeah. Like, you know, we've all been there. We've all made stupid mistakes. There are times mm -hmm. when I'm like, wow, why did I do that? That yeah. probably wasn't my smartest or wow. I definitely should have done that. But I mean, it, it's part of growing up, but it's mm -hmm. also, you, you have need to be held to, responsible. Yes, yeah. exactly. And, and, and it's, it'll be interesting to see what Montreal ends up doing. Maybe somebody will offer sheet him or something like that uh, for $20, tiny for $20. bonus. <laughs> Hilarious. If you guys weren't keeping up with that great, great yeah. content between Canes and uh, <laughs> Montreal, that's going to do it for our first segment. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we break down some Minnesota wild news and Capri Sauv watch. Stay tuned. It might be the off season, but that doesn't mean you can't still shop Bardown Beauty's apparel. Get yourself a tank to add to your summer wardrobe or a Bardown Beauty sticker to slap on your water bottle to stay hydrated in the summer heat. Whatever you want, we've got it all at our Bardown Beauty's Teespring store. We're back. Let's talk a little Minnesota wild news. We know you all are dying to hear our takes. Um, let's just start off with Caprice off watch. Shout out Fred for putting together that graphic. <laughs> Love to see it. Caprice off watch. Um, no real update. Sorry. That's, yeah, that's about that's it. The update. Um, I do truly appreciate the people stalking him at airports <laughs> and being like, he's getting on a plane or he took a sip of, uh, 
or I don't know, something that's Minnesotan, right? A McGolden yeah. Light. He was drinking a McGolden Light and that's, you know, he's coming back. Guys, let's relax here. Yeah. All right. Uh, KHL season has started officially <laughs> over there. Without the KHL, <laughs> Yes. The KHL has said he's not coming back. I mean, there's, there's nothing that suggests he won't be with the Minnesota Wild. It sounds like they might be moving slightly closer to an agreement, maybe reaching a five-year uh, middle ground, which would be great mm-hmm, for mm-hmm, both mm-hmm. sides. That's right? what I mean, we that like. Yep. The most sense. <laughs> mm-hmm. Do it, do it, do it. Um, yeah. So let's just all chill. All right. Yeah. Chill. Although I loved the photo of him at the airport where he looked like just confused to be there. I'm like, <laughs> honestly, me too. Like, what, can you tell us anything that's going on? Like, I don't know. Like, please that tell poor us something. Kid. He yeah. literally lives in Siberia. Like, you know, <laughs> just give him a break. Leave him alone. Jeez, it's his off season. Yeah. I, the anxiety passed once they came out and said, KHL is not having a back. KHL yeah. season started September 1st passed. I'm like, all right, I'm fine now. Just sign the deal, whatever you want to. I don't care. Just move on with it. Let's get it done with. I love that the KHL did like tweet out a picture of him with like his friends yes. working out or whatever, but and everybody like, freaked out. Yes, like, <laughs> he was like, he's clearly just standing there. Yeah. Like he's just standing there. If he was going to play, he's going to be wor- like craziness. You guys, it is crazy. He will be there. I I'm hoping he will be at training camp, which starts in just three weeks to, I guess when yes. we're listening to this, but who's ready. I'm ready. Are you ready? Let's us train I, camp preseason. Let's go. I was talking to somebody at work today and we were both saying like, God, I need hockey. Like I, we need hockey so bad. It feels like it's been like so long, but also it feels like just yesterday we were talking, you know, playoff hockey and whatnot. If you had Um, come to the beauty league with me, our fab five friends were looking for you every week to join me and. I should have given you like a little wallet cool. photo. I yeah. almost made a full size. I was going to say, you should just mm-hmm. hand out little like yeah. cards of me with my face on it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no, it's uh, it's going to, it's going to get here quickly. I mean, I, I know that training camp's going to be here before we know it. And then preseason games are going to be happening. And then the wild are going to be opening their season and it's going to happen really fast. So I'm really, really looking forward to it. I'm excited to see, um, you know, how the wild kick off their season here and just to have some hockey back to watch. We talked about protocols in the first segment and hopefully a complete season upcoming, um, that we can really sink our teeth into and break down and analyze because that is, uh, uh, the best thing in the world. So. Yeah, exactly. We'll kind of have a full preseason breakdown in our next episode or Mm -hmm. two. Um, so we won't dive too much into that. Plus we want to see what training camp looks like. I know I'll be there. Um, it sounds like all signs are pointing to Minnesota really banking on Marco Rossi being the guy that they want. It sounds like every, I mean, everything's kind of aligned for him to be a starter and make this roster coming out on opening day. What are your thoughts? Um, yeah, it's a, uh, you know, you, you're kind of pushing all your chips into the middle there, but, uh, it is literally, (laughs) literally. Um, but I am excited at the idea of it because he has bet everything that I've seen, you know, the things that people have said about him, people who've watched him playing kind of broken down his game. It sounds like he is going to be that player. Now it is Mm -hmm. so tough to translate that into NHL and say, oh yeah, he played great in this league or that league. Um, you know, same thing we talked about with Kirill Kaprizov is the KHL play going to translate into the NHL? Mm -hmm. Um, So you can have that argument with any player in any league. Um, So that always makes me a little bit nervous just because you truly, truly never know. Mm -hmm. Um, But I am very excited about him. It sounds like he could be all the hype that he's been getting. um, And if he does end up being as good as everyone's saying he's going to be, that Minnesota Wild for uh, offense is going to be pretty, pretty dangerous. So yeah. I hope it's true. That's all I'm going to say, but it is a dangerous game to play. um, But I hope it all works out how they're planning it out here. Right. On the flip side, looking back on the defensive end, uh, Minnesota, obviously losing Ryan Suter, Carson Soucy, uh, Ian Cole, some big presence back there, but they've really plumped it up with Mm -hmm. kind of a lot of, I don't want to say discount bin, but a little bit of the discount bin, right? You went with, uh, Kukulov and you went with Jordy Ben, you've got Alex Mm Goligoski, um, you've got John Merrill as well, uh, which they're all fine and well, but it makes you wonder, are they looking at Callen Addison anymore? Right? Like he was kind of that guy ready to step in. He got a little bit of NHL action. He didn't look bad. I mean, mm-hmm. by any means, um, and your, your top four is pretty set, but it's, I'm curious to see how much he might have to prove in training camp in order to get that shot. Or if maybe Minnesota already in their mind is like, Nope, we've signed these guys. You're going to have to wait another year, kid. Yeah, it's, it's tough to say what the mindset is there, because like you said, when he did get some opportunities up in the NHL uh, in the past season, I was impressed with the way he played. I thought he stood his ground. He blended in well. Um, I always say that sometimes for new guys, uh, the best thing to do is just not stick out, um, depend- especially for <laughs> right. defense, right? Um, yeah. If you're doing your job right, usually you're doing it pretty quietly, pretty calmly, and uh, you're getting the job done efficiently. So 
when I watched him, I thought he's doing a good job. He seems to fit in. He's not making any glaring mistakes. And that's sometimes all you can ask for, for new guys. So, um, I, I thought that in the opportunities he was given, he did prove himself with the small amount of chances that he had. Mm-hmm. That being said, like you said, Jesse, they obviously brought in a lot of new back end talent, um, to fill in some of the gaps, um, that were there after, uh, moves that happened this off season. Now, the only thing that I'm wondering is maybe their mindset is some of the guys they brought in have been in the league for a little while. Maybe they want a little bit more of that veteran presence back there guys who've been there done that um and maybe that's just the vibe that they're going for defensively this year obviously Callum's a young kid doesn't have a lot of NHL experience and maybe they're a little bit cautious of that especially knowing how many you know young guys there might be offensively and they want to balance that out with some Mm back-end talent uh veteran wise um so that could be their mindset that I'm thinking because I think Callum did a great job when he was up here um but we'll see what he does in training camp and maybe he ends up slotting in in a spot that uh is a little unexpected expected seeing what they did, uh, defensively in the off season, but we'll see. Yeah, no, I mean, I, you're absolutely right. I didn't even think about that. That's a completely veteran back end. Now, yeah. if you, I mean, if you're counting all those guys saying, yep, he's in, he's in, he's in, mm-hmm. um, it is, it's, it, there's no inexperience anywhere. Not that <laughs> yeah. they're really ever, I mean, Carson Susie was probably your youngest the, guy. Youngest, it was a pretty, yeah. pretty experienced squad. I know I asked, uh, Jared Spurgeon about this and, and he said, We've got Goose, which is Alex Galagasi, for those of you that don't know. And then we've got John, Merrill, and Jordy, and Kukulov as well. Broads and Dums are such a great pair together mm-hmm. with Broads' skating and Dums' offensive talent. I think you saw last year, Broads can be offensive at times, too. Just the group back there, we're looking forward to getting a different identity, but at the same time, give a more offensive push while being a bit grittier, too. Um, so I'm curious. I would love to see the defense be more offensive. Yeah. I mean, Minnesota has forever planted their flag in very <laughs> defensive very, as everyone outside of Minnesota calls it, very boring yeah. style of play, right? So that would be really fun to watch. I mean, Broad step up a little bit more. He mm-hmm. certainly did that last year. I mean, Dums, we all know high risk, high reward yep. type of player. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know much about John Merrill. Uh, Jordy Ben is is pretty consistent as well. I know Alex Galgoski will be great. And Kukulov, mm-hmm. I hear, is supposed to be a pretty cool guy too. So yeah. I'm curious if they do get more offensive and start taking some bigger, those risks, especially if you're counting you know, you can know you can count on cam tell, but right. you know, you can probably count on Capo Kakin. And so maybe you do get to play a little bit up closer and uh, push the offense a little bit more. That could be fun. Yeah. It's going to be fun to see what happens because I think that even though they've got, as you called it, the quote unquote, you know, discount bin players, sometimes a collection of players like that ends up equating to that, you know, top tier talent that you're looking for in one player. Mm -hmm. doesn't always work that way. That's always the hope, right? Is that you get some players for cheap and all of them combined, create a a talent in whatever area on the ice that you're filling uh, the holes in there for, like you said, that's a great point about the goalies though, as well as, you know, Talbot obviously has the experience. Um, Kakanen played great when he had the chances to, he struggled mm-hmm. a little bit at the end of the season, but when they really, really needed him to play well in the middle of the season during the COVID outbreak and whatnot, um, he was on his game. So right. I'm excited to see what a strong goaltending tandem plus a veteran like defensive core will really do for the Minnesota wild. And, um, yeah, they've been that defensive team for a very long time that dates back all the way to Jacques Lemaire and the, you know, the early days in the Minnesota wild, they haven't had much, you know, star power offensively throughout their history. And so they've always been, you know, tagged as a a defensive team. Um, but maybe this year will be a little bit different and they've got some options now to mix things up. Uh, I mean, really the only, you know, two, two, some that you've got solid still after that last season is, uh, Matt Dumba and Jonas Brodeen. So you got a lot Mm -hmm. to work with as far as kind of mixing pieces around and see what ends up happening. And, uh, you never know what the perfect match will be. Yeah, exactly. Overall. So, I mean, they've been pretty quiet. We thought Minnesota was going to go berserk, right? This off season. And they've been fairly quiet. I mean, again, plumping up the defensive line, they've added a couple forwards, but nothing too dramatic, no huge, big splash that we thought they would do when they had bought out Ryan Suter and Zach Parisi and mm-hmm. had a little bit of extra money to play with. Do you think that the wild have gotten better, worse, or about the same as last year? I would say probably about the same. Um, if you, if you go, you know, as my dad always likes to say, he's an account net net, um, which is, you know, <laughs> taking everything and, uh, and, and, you know, subtracting and adding and figuring it all out. Uh, they obviously lost some big pieces, um, and they gained some smaller pieces as we just talked about. Um, mm-hmm. but I don't see this team as significantly worse than they were last season. And it's always hard to tell, um, based on the kind of pieces the wild got this year, you know, none of them are, are superstars. It's hard mm-hmm. to tell how those kind of guys will really fit into a new team. So I don't feel comfortable 
tangible saying they got better either. Um, mm-hmm. But I think they kept a lot of the core pieces that were critical to their success last season. Those pieces are still there. Guys like Cam Talbot, Kirill Kaprizov, Kevin Fiala, you know, those pieces that were, were really contributing to wild wins are still there for the most part. Um, right. Yes, they made a lot of changes and they made a lot of changes um, that necessarily people weren't expecting. I mean, the things that everyone thought the wild were going to do, they didn't end up doing. And Which I they think- never do. They don't listen to you Twitter GMs, by <laughs> no. the way. No. that out there. Yeah, Me they should really hire all you guys. Um, <laughs> I think the one thing that maybe the wild were aiming for in doing smaller splashes rather than, you know, getting a guy like Jack Eichel, which I'm glad we're not talking about anymore. Thank God for that. Um, (laughs) I think maybe they were a little cautious because they overachieved so much last year. And like I said, you still have a lot of those pieces that helps you overachieve and, and get the success you had and get to the playoffs and push round one to a seven game series when you looked like you were down and out in game four. Um, and so I think maybe they were thinking, Hey, we've got a chance with some of these pieces that we are already have. Maybe we don't need to make as big of the moves as we thought at the beginning of last season. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, I wonder if the wild wouldn't have finished as, as well as they did in the regular season, if they would have maybe made bigger moves this year. So I think they're a little nervous. Maybe that's just my take on it is that they might be thinking that they have a better chance this upcoming season than they thought they would, um, when last season started. So maybe they mm-hmm. think that a couple little tweaks here and there is going to get the job done and you get some of your big players signed to longer term contracts and you start to build from there. So I, I hope that's the case. I hope that they, uh, overachieve again this year, but they look to me about the same kind of team as they were uh, at the end of last season. I think you went safe. You went with the safe answer. Yep. <laughs> I don't disagree, but like you said, they overachieved last year. So for me, I think they're going to be a little bit worse. I mean, you're right. They do have still the very core players, mm-hmm. Jewel Erickson, you still have Marcus Bellino. You still have Jordan Greenway. You still have Kaprizov. Remember we still have Kaprizov. <laughs> um, you know, you still have, uh, Matt Dumba and Jonas I- Brodeen and Jared Spurgeon, and that's all fine and well, but I think you still can't replace a guy like Ryan Suter. I yep. loved Ian Cole back there, right? Yes. I, I loved Carson Susie for that matter. I think Nick Benino also was a big part of last year's um, expectations. You know, I think just his presence in the locker room mm-hmm. said a lot. Uh, Marcus Johansson could probably take or leave. Unfortunately, I don't think we saw enough of him because yeah. he was hurt and, and down and out and whatnot. Um, but I do, I mean, I think those pieces leaving are bigger than the pieces that are trying to replace them. I do think yeah, that there fair. is something to be said, um, you know, about a change of faces, right. About having sure. a group that still knows each other and bringing in those new faces, um, that could possibly help, right. It just a general different feel, a different locker room vibe, um, could be really beneficial. Not to say that those guys that have now left were not a part of a good locker room culture. Clearly they were. Um, but I mean, that can help, but I do, I think because they exceeded, I'm going to say they're a little bit worse because I think, mm-hmm. I set the bar low because they disappoint me. If you go back to the playoffs, I get disappointed every time I put faith in the team. You got optimism, optimistic for a second and they let you down the minute you did. That's how it goes. Exactly. So that's my, that's my take. Final, final topic on the Minnesota wild winter classic jerseys. I was out at the state fair. I, there was a loud applause from the group that had gathered at the wild thing. So don't lie. There were people out there that liked them. It could have been Um, a Bronx cheer though. You never know. (laughs) I know it's so true. Uh, it could just been for Jared (laughs) hanging out. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Alexis, what do you think? Okay. So when they released the jerseys, remember you work um, for the Minnesota wild. So I, I do, this is true. Um, so Minnesota wild front office, please uh, tune out now. <laughs> um, no, I, I love the jerseys. Um, so I, when stuff like this happens, I try to not look at anyone else's opinion before I form my own, because I don't want everyone else to like weigh in on what I think. Like I have right. my initial reaction. I'm like, okay, I'm that I'm going to put that out there and then I'll see what everyone else thinks and see if I'm in the, you know, the minority or the majority. And, um, so I looked at the jerseys, I watched some of the videos and I immediately put out my tweet and I said, and I quote the Minnesota wild winter classic jerseys are in quote in all capital letters, sexy. Um, (laughs) I thought they were super cool. Um, I loved the colors. I loved the design. I loved the stripes. Um, I think they looked a little old school and I loved that. Um, so I thought they were very unique, very different. Um, and I really, really liked them. Then I went on, then I started scrolling through Twitter. So I put my tweet out. I was like, all right, there it is. Let me see. And I thought I was like, I'm going to be in the majority. This is, you know, a lame take. It's going to blend in with everybody else. And I started scrolling and everyone's like, 
like hideous, disgusting. These are terrible. Hire me. The amount of vomit emojis that are in my mentions. I was like, Jesus, you guys like, all right. Everybody hated them. I think I can count on one hand how many people agreed with my take that I saw. And everybody was like, you know, who likes these jerseys? These suck. And they're like going on and on. And I'm like, I don't think they're that bad. Um, I know a lot of people's biggest takeaway for why they didn't like them was they seemed too cluttered. Um, and I do agree with that, that I can see why someone would think that. Um, Mm -hmm. and the other thing that people were saying, which I do actually agree with this is the elbow patches are not a look. Those are not a look they could have done without the elbow patches. And to me, that would have been chef's kiss Jersey. Um, that's the only thing I didn't really like. What about you, Jesse? Um, I liked them. I didn't, yeah, I didn't hate them. Like everybody I was, I was also (laughs) kind of shocked at the Everyone amount was of people mean. that were just so angry about yeah. it. Like people were coming at me. I'm like, <laughs> I, I have an opinion. This is just my thought. You don't have to buy them. I'm not going to buy yeah. one either, but whatever. Um, I'm in the camp though, that does think they're a little too cluttered. I think the front of the chest could have been just a little bit simpler, maybe have just gone with the M. Um, I know people were mad that Minneapolis was represented. You guys, Minneapolis had a team, the Minneapolis yeah. Millers. That was a thing, you know, like it wasn't ever just like in St. Paul. And remember yeah. the Minnesota wild. I know I spoke with John Mayhar, um, who's the senior brand advisor for the wild. And he had said, he's like, we wanted to still appeal to Minnesota as a whole mm-hmm. and how the twins brought mini and St. Paul in. And that's what they're kind of thinking. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't hate them. I think they're a huge, lovely throwback to the 1920s and the thirties yeah. and the forties. I mean, you go back and you look at what those uniforms did with the, all the stripes, that's what those jerseys looked like. So that's what they were trying to do. Mm-hmm. People that wanted the North star look again, like we already have that. You already have yeah, the retro the jersey reverse that retro. covers that. <laughs> the North stars are not here anymore. <laughs> yeah. so we need to move on. <laughs> yeah. But, I, um, I mean, the other thing that I would caution people to, which I know you all know this cause you're hockey fans and you watch hockey games. Yeah. Um, but seeing the way a Jersey, you know, plays on, on the ice is different than just looking at a picture of sure. it. Like I did not like the reverse retro wild jerseys when they first came out. Like when I was looking at pictures, I was like, Oh, I don't really like these. But yeah. then when I saw them in the game, I was like, no, those look really cool. Like in real live game time up against the white ice. Um, they mm-hmm. just looked so much cooler to me when I was watching them in a game. So and with the breezers and the gloves, like Thick. that's what, yes. the, that looks so good. And I think that's with these jerseys, like you guys, those breezers and those gloves are yep. nice. They look they're nice old and school, leathery. They're cool. Like yep. the whole complete look is much, much stronger than just the jersey yeah. on its own. So if you're going to buy the jersey, go buy some breezers and go buy some gloves too. <laughs> and then complete, complete the, look. the look and people will love it. Uh, but yeah, I, I was, I was a little taken aback by the amount of folks that I, I yeah. really, aside from you, I don't know many people that were like, yeah, no, literally. Like, okay. Like this is my, I mean, people today are still at me on it. So I'm like, I'm sorry. Like yeah. somebody commented on they're my not. tweet. They're like, you must have low standards. I was like, well, yeah, but I mean, that has nothing look to at do my with life. Like, my yeah, life I'm is like, filled yeah. with low standards. This jersey yeah. is the least of my problems. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, yeah. And I think you have a good point. I'm curious to see what they look like, especially yeah. on the ice and at, up against at, the Jersey of their opponent. Right. I mean, right? there's so many things that. that play into it. Yeah. St. Louis is probably going to be super hideous. There you yeah. go. We'll and win the, the Jersey contest as long as well as the game. May I remind you the Dallas stars came out with a neon Jersey last year. Did we forget this? That's still the ugliest Jersey of all time. So no matter what happens, <laughs> nothing will be worse than that. That's what people were like. They'd send me like different jerseys. Like, oh, well, look at how bad Dallas was. And look how bad this was. And like a whole bunch of people were like, those were way better. And I was like, <laughs> no. oh my God, like there's no winning no. with you guys. You guys have um, lost your minds. <laughs> yeah. Sorry for those who disagree with Alexis and I. We're right. You're yeah, wrong. I'm not sorry. Meh. Yeah. <laughs> take your opinion you and take it somewhere different. else. <laughs> you need it different. You need to mix it up. And yeah. I think they, they did that and uh, it's here. So they're not changing it. They haven't changed it for two years now because they were the same ones that were made when they were supposed to play in 2021. So yeah, honestly, they're going with it, like it or not. Uh, that's going to do it for our segment too. We're going to take a quick break and uh, wrap. We'll be right back. Hey guys, this is producer Fred. I just wanted to ask everyone to go out there and spread the word about Bar Down Beauties. Leave us a like, share, thumbs up, review, you name it. We want to hear from you. Find us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and of course, your favorite podcast app. We back. That's going to do it for this week's episode. Uh, Like we mentioned earlier on, we kick off season three of Bard on Beauties starting next week um, with episode 90, which sounds pretty crazy. I'm excited to reach 100. You know, that'd be pretty cool. 
Yeah. yeah 90 school too though. 89 still- school too. It blows my mind. Like every time we get to like, what seems like a milestone, it's like, oh my God, like, I can't believe we've done that many episodes. Like, it just feels yeah. like, I don't, it feels stop. like so many once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> we're not doing a season three guys. Actually, this is the end of our JK. This, we're out. <laughs> if you made it this far, let us know. Yeah. If you heard us say Congrats. that. No. <laughs> Fred's going to be editing this. Oh, we forgot to fire Fred. Um, oh, he's fired yeah, yeah. again this week. Fred, you're fired again. <laughs> Fred, you fired again. He thought cabin time on Labor Day weekend was more important than recording. So yeah. whatever. Classic Minnesota summertime people. God, I Shake know my head. I yeah, know. Whatever. Jealous. Um, but yeah, so that's going to do it for this week. Thank you guys for tuning in. Shout out to talk North for featuring us on their lovely network. Uh, we'll be back with them again in season three. Shout out to presenting sponsor sodastick.com. Don't forget you can get 15, not 50. Sometimes I feel like it sounds like I say 50, <laughs> 15, one, five, percent off any purchases with code bar down beauties. You can also get a free $10 at betteredge.com with quotes or uh, code buttes, B E A U T S. Uh, also be sure to check out Tony Hoagland at Champlin state farm, as well as Jim beam. Cheers to you. Cheers to me. Delicious, delightful. It's a really good fall drink too. I think, right. Jim yeah. beam and whiskey. Sounds really good. You can make so many fall. good fall drinks with Jim Beam. I mean, there's yeah. some great, great like fall cocktails. Summer cocktails are great. Fall cocktails, though, close second, close mm. second. See, that's where I would do chefs. Because <laughs> now I can drink again, guys. It's pretty yes. exciting. It's pretty great. Non-pregnant um, Jessie's living her best life. <laughs> she really is, although she's trying to like be pre-pregnant Jessie, and that's not working well for her. Like she tries a little too hard, and I'm like, <laughs> I should stop drinking right now. So your body I'm will fun. get used to it. Yeah, that's, that's what I keep telling myself. Like, just keep forcing it. Just down. keep trying. Yeah. <laughs> my husband's like, you should stop. Oh my God. Nah, we're good. We're having fun. Um, but yeah, so shout out and th- shout out to all of you guys for tuning in, checking us out each and every week. We really, really appreciate you. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel, subscribe, check out all of our videos, but in particular, check out our cues with the buttes. See if we answered your question, uh, which we are bringing back in full force heading into season three, as well as our up for debate. Those are going to be great. Mm-hmm. Follow us on social media for, uh, that type of content. Uh, again, we're on Instagram. Twitter, Facebook, we're even on LinkedIn. LinkedIn, we're yeah. professionals, guys. Professionals. So, top tier. <laughs> top tier. So check and follow us on all of those. Uh, we'll be back again next week. Thanks for listening. Have a good one. Bye.